He was one of the most famous Union generals from the American Civil War. He led his side to victory in the 19th century. He was the 18th President of the United States, serving from 1869 to 1877. Here are a few facts you didn't know about Ulysses Simpson Grant. He was born on the 27th of April, 1822, in Point Pleasant, Ohio. His father was Jesse Root Grant, a tanner and a merchant, and he would be the one to introduce him to military life eventually. Ulysses graduated from the West Point Military Academy alongside Robert Lee, his bitter rival during the Civil War. They even served together in the Mexican-American War. His full name is Hiram Ulysses Grant, and you probably wonder why there is a letter S in his name. Well, when his father arranged for him to enter the academy, somebody made the mistake of listing him as Ulysses S. Grant. Not wanting to be rejected by the academy, he changed his name on the spot. Unlike Robert Lee, Grant wasn't really excelling at West Point. While Lee had almost perfect grades, Grant was average at best. He did well in mathematics and geology, and only did excellent in horsemanship. He did ultimately graduate 21st out of 39 in 1843, and it can be said that he was glad to be out. In the beginning of his military career, Grant was stationed in St. Louis, Missouri, where he met his future wife, Julia Dent. He proposed to her in 1844, but before they could wed, Grant was sent to fight in the Mexican-American War. He served as a quartermaster under General Zachary Taylor and General Winfield Scott, where he obtained valuable military and leadership skills. After the war, he finally married Julia in 1848 and they had four children. In the early 1850s, Grant began drinking as a consequence of a long-distant relationship with his wife. His love for alcohol became a problem which haunted him throughout his military career. His heavy drinking would eventually result in Colonel Buchanan demanding his resignation from the army. After he resigned, Grant returned to his family uncertain of his future. As a civilian, Grant needed work to support his family. He tried to start some business of his own, trying to earn a living as a farmer at first, real estate agent after that, and a rent collector at the end. Needless to say, he wasn't earning as good as he was back in the army. In the following years, Grant acquired a 35-year-old slave named William Jones from his father-in-law, and although he was in a tough financial position, Grant refused to sell him for his value of 1500 American dollars and he eventually freed him, saying that he just can't bring himself to make a slave work for him. When the Civil War broke out, Grant quickly raised and recruited a company of volunteers trying to get a field command, but Major General George B. McClellan refused to see him, remembering the day when he saw him on a drunken spree. Nonetheless, he was promoted to the rank of Brigadier General with the aid of his advocate, Representative Elihu B. Washburn of Illinois. After a few skirmishes with the Confederates, Grant had won the first major victory for the Union by capturing Fort Donelson from the Confederate General John B. Floyd. This act elevated Grant from an obscure and unproven leader to the rank of Major General and also earned him the nickname Unconditional Surrender Grant as Floyd accepted Grant's terms of surrender without hesitation. After a few battles, most of which fell in the favor of the Union, Lincoln promoted Grant to Lieutenant General, giving him the command of all Union armies. Next, a series of brutal battles fought in Virginia during the Overland Campaign which resulted in a strategic victory of the Union, the only obstacle left was Robert Lee's forces at Petersburg. Needless to say, Grant severely weakened Lee's strengths as many of his troops deserted by the thousands due to hunger and the strains of trench warfare. At the end, Lee surrendered to Grant at the Appomattox Courthouse. Grant later wrote in his memoirs that Lee was a man with much dignity, and that he was sad over the downfall of a foe who had fought so long and so valiantly. After his victory, he ordered his soldiers to stop all celebrations, saying the war is over, the rebels are our countrymen again. Five days after the end of the war, Lincoln invited Grant and his wife to Fort's theater, but Grant would ultimately decline as he and his family planned to travel to Philadelphia. In a conspiracy that targeted several government leaders, Lincoln was shot and killed by John Wilkes Booth at that theater. 
Grant later suspected himself being one of the targets as well. At Lincoln's funeral, Grant cried openly, stating later Lincoln was the greatest man that he ever knew. On the 4th of March, 1869, Grant was sworn as the 18th President of the United States by Chief Justice Salmon P. Chase. With his presidency came the Reconstruction Era, which resulted in all former Confederate states being readmitted into the United States and being given a representative in Congress. His presidency was also a bit of a roller coaster, as he had to deal with corruption, numerous scandals within his own administration, with the financial crisis of 1873, the Ku Klux Klan, and the threat of war with Great Britain and Spain. Grant was one of the most famous American presidents and a national hero, as his efforts during the Reconstruction era helped the nation to heal its scars caused by the Civil War. After his presidency, Grant wrote several articles on his Civil War campaigns for the Century magazine, which were all well received by critics. In the October of 1884, he was diagnosed with cancer, possibly caused by his frequent cigar smoking. After his diagnosis, he was constantly worried about his financial situation as he intended to leave his family with a stable financial position. This was assured when his friend Mark Twain offered him a book contract for his war memoirs with a 75% royalty. To provide for his family, Grant worked intensely on his memoirs and died only a few days after he finished them. The memoirs have been highly regarded by the public, military historians and literary critics. After a year-long struggle with cancer, Grant died on the 23rd of July 1885 at the age of 63. Thousands attended his funeral and his body was finally laid to rest in the General Grant National Memorial, the largest mausoleum in North America. What did you think about our pick this time? Did we say something wrong? For more videos like this, subscribe to Forum Feast and leave us a comment saying what you would like to see next. Until next time, goodbye.